Good morning, St. James. It's Sunday, March the 14th, the fourth Sunday of Lent. I hope you've already downloaded your service bulletin. If not, there's a link right below this video, so click on that link and you can see the bulletin on screen and you can worship with us. Today we have a guest preacher and presider, the Reverend Julie Honig-Smith is with us. And so uh, take it away, Julie. Good morning. Our service this morning begins with the penitential order in your bulletin on page two. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord, take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the ser serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in playing Psalm 107 responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his, and his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he, that he redeemed, redeemed them, them from the, from the hand, hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from, from the, the east, east and, from and from the west, from the, west, from the from north, north and from, from the, the south. south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were they afflicted were because, because of their, of their sins. sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, 
and he delivered them them from from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and and saved saved them from from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the the wonders wonders he does does for his his children. children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and and tell of his acts acts with shouts shouts of joy. This is Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand in our to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up and whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Danger frequently paves the way to new life. The weird and mysterious story in today's lesson from the book of Numbers about the snakes and the first of the three passion predictions in John's gospel, as Jesus continues his conversation and explanations to Nicodemus. It sets the tone for this midpoint of Lent as we move closer to the passion and the resurrection. These readings, along with the passage from Ephesians, establish our theology, the meaning of pain and healing, transformation and redemption, God's saving love. Pretty heavy stuff on what we have come to know in our tradition as Rose Sunday, or Refreshment Sunday, or Latare Sunday. 
Traditionally, each historic mass had an entrance antiphon, and the antiphon for the fourth Sunday of Lent is from the 66th chapter of the book of Isaiah, and it begins like this. Rejoice, Jerusalem, come together, you who love her. In Latin, one of the words used for rejoice is latare. So that is why it's referred to as latare Sunday. Sometimes you might see some pink even uh, sprinkled into the flowers or the greenery during the season or the pink vestments. This midway point during Lent, when we take a reprieve from the penitential quality of observance and worship, the rose-colored vestments are abound instead of the purple, although we also have purple too. Even though we might look up from our prayer posture of downcast eyes and bowed head for a little breath of fresh air on this fourth Sunday of Lent, we also know that the cross comes before the resurrection. It's been said that sometimes suffering is the only path to redemption, and often the road to healing and light runs straight through darkness and pain. It may not be a comforting message, but it is a truthful one. Don't you think that we've suffered enough with all the COVID restrictions that we've been bearing for this past year? Moses led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. Day after day, they had been trampling around in the desert with God providing manna to eat with Moses at the helm. They were tired and frustrated and not at all sure where they were going or even if Moses knew what he was doing. Dissension is growing in their ranks. The Let's Go Back to Egypt committee is forming and the murmuring and the complaints continue. They whined. Slavery in Egypt was tough, but it was better than this freewheeling way of life we have now. With freedom, there are too many choices. With Pharaoh, at least we knew what to expect. There's a few Let Us Go Back to Egypt groups around our country these days, and in particular states that are anxious to get back to a more normal way of living, to get back to the way things were pre-COVID. The grumblings are mixed with economic needs, of course, and some political drive. I venture that there are many who have difficulties sustaining the sacrifices needed until it is clear that we can get to where we are going. To achieve the herd immunity, to be able to let up on the restrictions, the things that we need for the safety, like the same sort of things that we needed for herd immunity from measles or polio, to be able to get back to the way things were. To get to where we were going, to where we want to be, to eradicate the virus. I don't know. Perhaps Dr. Fauci is our Moses. Eventually, God has enough of the Israelites whining and sends a pack of poisonous serpents into their midst. Many of them die before the Let's Go Back to Egypt committee can convince Moses to change God's mind. We know the story of the serpent getting the best of God's people before, back in the Garden of Eden. No wonder the Israelites were scared. But things change when Moses makes a bronze snake and puts it on a pole. Those that died were given a new life, Every time someone was bitten, all he or she had to do was to look to the serpent to be healed. You may know that this symbol of a snake wrapped around a staff was adapted by the American Medical Association, taking the image of the ancient Greek god Eusekopus, the god of healing. Working in healthcare, I often see that there is a lot of pain and suffering before one can be fully healed. Jeremiah said, the days are coming, days of restoration, days of rebuilding, days of returning to hope and faith and joy. With this promise in mind, 
we can find the faith not to lose heart in the face of all that is wrong with our world. We can have faith in the God-given gifts of the scientists who have worked so hard to get the vaccines out to us in such a short amount of time. Danger frequently paves the way to new life. An image of ugliness and death can be a means to wholeness. The biblical stories are our stories of loss and darkness that bring forth renewal and light. These scriptures today echo the larger story of our salvation. Jesus' violent death on the cross is the moment of God's redemption and reconciliation between God and creation and humanity. Yet still, whether it is Moses raising up a dead servant, serpent or Jesus bleeding on the cross, it is an odd way for God to show God's love and mercy to the people granting healing through pain and lifting up an ugly image of death to bring about new life. On the other hand, snakes in the ancient world were also a symbol of both death and danger, futility, life, and healing. Perhaps that'll help us a little bit with this. And so as Jesus continues in his conversation with Nicodemus, explaining what it means to be born from above, and then further extends his teaching to the others gathered, as he says at the beginning of this gospel, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Seen through our Christian eyes, the image of death lifted high on a pole is not that of a serpent, but that of God in Christ lifted high on the cross. When Jesus says, God so loved the world, Jesus is asking us to see the God who created the world out of love as the same God who is lifted high on the cross and is redeeming love. Sometimes it's hard to know if that love is like dying in the dark night on Good Friday or the glory of Easter's morning light. But Lent's journey is always, journeys us through Good Friday that we cannot get to without before we get to Easter. All of us eventually will bear the sadness of the cross. We all know the pain and love that mingle together in our own stories as they do in the heart of God. Helen Keller wrote, Faith is the strength by which shattered world shall emerge into the light. Faith is the strength by which a shattered world will emerge into the light. In the Gospels, Jesus tells us that the things of this world can bring death and that only the things of God can bring life. Not all of us come to faith through critical or life-threatening darkness in our lives, but we do all have our own variations of darkness that we come out of for some and still struggle with our own ongoing basis. Jesus came into the world among all the things of this world that bring darkness and death, and yet even in his death, Jesus brings life. And that is the promise for us in the readings today. Just like Moses lifted up the bronze servant on a pole, the Roman soldiers lifted up Jesus on a cross. And just as the Israelites had only to look at the bronze serpent and believe to be healed, we have only to look to Christ to live in the light. Faith in Jesus means welcoming this love which saved us and gives us life. A love so great that it bears our grumblings and our complaints when you're wondering in the darkness, wondering when we'll ever get back to life as normal. A love that weeps with us in our sorrows. A love that heals us from our wounds, past and present, emotional and physical. And a love that picks us up when we fall and endures forever. A love that on this fourth Sunday of Lent, we can rejoice in.
Thanks be to God. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page six of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, begotten not, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy apostolic Catholic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me for the prayers of the people found on page seven of your bulletin. Have mercy on us, O God, According to your loving kindness, in your great compassion, hear our prayers. We pray for the whole church, all leaders and ministers, and all the holy people of God. Wash us through and through. And cleanse us from our sins. We pray for our nation, for all the nations of the earth, and for all who govern and judge. Purge us from our sin, and we shall be pure. We pray for those who hunger, those who thirst, those who cry out for justice, those who live under the threat of terror, and those without a place to lay their head. Make them hear of joy and gladness that those who are broken may rejoice. We pray for those who are ill, those in pain, those under stress, and those who are lonely. Give them the joy of your saving help and sustain them with your bountiful spirit. In the season of Lent, we pray for those who seek a deeper knowledge of God especially those preparing for baptism, confirmation, or reception. We pray that we all might be given the grace and strength to repent and grow closer to you. Create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us. We pray for those who have died and who have entered into the land of eternal light and your abiding peace. Cast them not away from your presence. And take your Holy Spirit from them. Dear people of God, for what or whom would you have us pray? Gracious God, because of your great love for the world, you gave us your Son. Grant us the strength and wisdom to believe in him that we would not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, O the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that, fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, whoever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to the suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death and resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at that last day, bring us with St. James and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray together. God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who feeds us and gives us eternal life. 
that we cannot share bread and wine. We thank you that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and of all other gifts of Christ's passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ's own Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Okay, St. James, we do have a couple of announcements. We have one birthday this coming week, and that would be for Kevin Mallon. So uh, we'll say the prayer on page 12, the celebration prayer for Kevin. Watch over your child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he fall. And in our hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Kevin. Yes, you will get corned beef and cabbage on your birthday. Uh, so this week we have the study of, Saint, of the book of James continuing on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. The link is in your bulletin. The Women's Book Club last week chose two titles to read this month. You can read both titles you can read one of them, or you know what? You can read none of them, and you're still welcome to come to the book club next month. So please look in your bulletin for those, or in your uh, Thursday email for those titles and for the link for the meeting next month. And we're continuing with morning prayer and evening prayer. Those links are also in your email. And if you just don't have any idea what I'm talking about about this email, if you go to our website, which will scroll 
at the end of this recording, and there's also a link right below this video. You can sign up to receive our email every week and be informed of all these things. And that's all I have for you. And so, Reverend Julie, would you dismiss us with your blessing? May God give you a contrite heart, heal you by the wounds of Christ, and speak to you words of pardon and peace And may the blessing of the one holy, undivided Trinity be upon you and abide with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks.